This is History Myths and Myth Conceptions, and today's myth conception is Religious philosophy is philosophy. This phrase may seem a little odd, mainly because the word philosophy is repeated here twice. There is a discipline called religious philosophy, and it is very deceptive and misleading. Things get even more complicated because there is another discipline called philosophy of religion, which is distinct from religious philosophy. And sometimes religious philosophy poses as philosophy of religion and as philosophy in general, which turns everything into a mess. People just stop distinguishing one from another and are practically forced to believe that all of this is basically the same thing. This misconception evolves into a serious aberration of perception. It is very hard to give a definition of philosophy in general. In short, philosophy is an inquiry into how things are, how stuff works, and what we should do about it. Philosophy is usually critical, operates on reason and logic. Religion operates on faith. A discipline of religion called theology is dedicated to a study of a particular set of religious beliefs, employing a more or less rational thought in order to clarify this particular set of religious beliefs. It doesn't really question faith. It even accepts miracles and revelations. Philosophy of religion is rational inquiry into religious issues, theoretically without any reliance on acts of faith or existence of some deity. The purpose, theoretically, is revealing the essence of a religion. Religious philosophy is reflections upon the concepts introduced by a certain religion, which combines faith and, theoretically, reason and logic so the faith is not entirely blind. And this is where we have problems. First of all, there are occasional debates whether philosophy of religion and religious philosophy are actually two different things, since the dividing lines here are blurred, and it is really hard to distinguish one from another. One can also argue that religious philosophy is relying on pure faith a bit too much to be philosophy. So it frequently looks like theology and nothing more. And the biggest problem is that theology likes to present itself as either philosophy of religion or religious philosophy, to a point when almost every time you hear about religious philosophy, it is not philosophy at all. It is just theology. There are only vestiges of philosophy and nothing more. The implications of the mess we are discussing right now are numerous, and they are not as harmless as it may seem. Theology tries to elevate itself and pretends to be a philosophy, logical and scientific, and therefore its arguments suddenly increase their value in the eyes of the audience. At the same time, a significant part of the audience cannot tolerate truly important questions like how many angels can dance on the head of a pin, and presumes that this is what philosophy is about. They become skeptical of philosophy in general, and will never touch, say, Plato, expecting more nonsense about the dancing angels. So religious philosophy, and sometimes philosophy of religion as well, actually give real philosophy a bad name. People often say things like, philosophy is not science. While actually the philosophers were original scientists and developed a scientific method. Pretty much all of the modern divisions of science previously were divisions of philosophy. What was known as natural philosophy less than two centuries ago is now known as, well, as many things, but mostly as physics. Theology violates the basic principles of philosophy. It is essentially anti-scientific. Philosophers may introduce and examine 
some really extravagant concepts, sometimes purely as an exercise. But when you hear Plato saying that only virtuous people can be happy, or when you hear Epicurus saying that pleasure is good and pain is bad, or when you hear the Stoics say that pleasure is not good and pain is not bad, well, you might rightfully expect that they will proceed to logical scrutiny of what they just said. Theology, posing as religious philosophy, on the other hand, always assumes that there is some invisible unicorn somewhere in the sky, and he reveals mind-blowing secrets to mankind. And this faith cannot be questioned. This is the foundation of theology. So when you see the list of famous philosophers that includes people like Plato, Aristotle, Thomas Aquinas, and Averroes, well, only two of them were actual philosophers, and the other two were religious thinkers who liked Aristotle a lot. <laughs>